I'm going to attempt a Pokemon Legends Arceus Hardcore Nuzlocke using only water types. Which of course means we're going to get some pretty sweet encounters. Here are the rules for this playthrough. When a Pokemon faints, it's dead. No items in battle. I can only use the first water type encounter from each sub area. And the level cap will be aligned with the last trainer or boss Pokemon from each area as shown on the map. Professor Laventon prevents us with three options for a starter. I don't have much of a choice here, but who do you all think is the best? Like the video for Rowlet? That's the best one. Subscribe to the channel for Cyndaquil. And if Oshawa is your favorite... Stop it. Get some help. Yeah, looks like I'm stuck with that dumpster fire of a Pokemon. Look at those two cheer on their pal Oshawott. Yeah, right. They're just glad he's finally gone. So he gets the fitting name of Bubble Bass. And just like Michael Jordan said, I get some help by catching a Bidoof at Aspiration Hill. She's not a water type yet, so I name her Sandy Cheeks and won't use her until she evolves. Same thing goes for this Eevee that I catch at Horseshoe Plains and name him SpongeBob SquarePants. Then I had some trouble getting this Shellos at Sandigan Flats. Catch it! Catch it! Oh my gosh, it's gonna run. Oh, we got it. Okay. Woo! Gary is a perfect name for this one. Just a little longer, I guess. Wait. Shiny Wurmple. This is what I wanted in my shiny playthrough. <sighs> they see me rolling. They hating. And then the purple one's like, yeah, get out of the way. Nice. To make sure you never miss a shiny sound, check out this video sponsor, Raycon. I've been looking to upgrade to wireless earbuds for a while now, and I know people that really like the Raycon Everyday Earbuds. So when they reached out to me, I thought the timing was perfect. I did have to make sure for myself how well they would actually stay in my ears. Pokemon. Pikachu? Next Pokemon. Hey. This isn't a Pokemon. Well, Nintendo thinks he's a joke. Oh, that's true. Not only do they not budge, but they also come with multiple gel tips. That way, they'll be the most comfortable in your ear no matter what. They give great sound, 8 hours of playtime, and 32 hours of battery life. Raycons offer this audio quality at half the price compared to other premium brands and have proven their quality with over 48,000 five-star reviews. Go click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash andrewshow to get 15% off your next Raycon purchase. Sandy gets so excited from the sight of a shiny evolving into a barrel. Now, I think it goes without saying, but I do need to catch some Pokemon to fill out dex entries in order to progress the story, but I do release them all. With the first star now mine, it's time to get into our first battle, that being Ray. His only Pokemon is Pikachu, which is exactly what my water types hate. It immediately thunder waves, paralyzing Sandy. I respond with an agile tackle just to keep the action speed even between us. So Pikachu can't use two moves in a row. I go for it again, but fail, all because of the paralysis. Luckily, the evolved beaver is bulky enough to take a few hits, then tackles again, winning our first rival fight. Zisu then approaches me, offering to teach Sandy a new move, Rock Smash. I'll take it, which is just what I needed for my battle versus Mize Munchlax. The little baby does all he can to defend himself, but the rock smashes make this an easy fight. This results in Bubble Bass finally no longer being useless because he's now a Dewat. He zips into battle facing the Alpha Cricketoon. After being smacked by an Aerial Ace, Bubble Bass always goes for Aqua Jet first, since it allows him to get a second attack right away with his own Aerial Ace. A couple back and forth hits lead to our victory. Woo, why is it so hot here? Anyways, the clan leaders and commander assigned me to calm down the frenzied cleaver. First things first though, gotta catch a weasel at Windswept Runs and name her Mrs. Puff. However, Leanne is in my way of confronting cleaver, so we battle it out. Easy peasy though. Gumi's lame physical defense means I just gotta roll out a few times. Stop acting sad, kid. You're the whole reason why we had to battle. Whatever, at least it's time for me to ride Weird Ear. With my trusty steed, I'm able to travel faster to break apart blue ore deposits until I find a water stone, which evolves SpongeBob into a Vaporeon. Our last match in the Obsidian Field Lens is an Evolution Showdown versus Erida's Glaceon. SpongeBob starts off with a calm mind, bulking up his defenses alongside his great HP stat. This effectively walls all of Glaceon's attacks while SpongeBob slowly bubbles them down to zero HP. Now, the reason I don't use the Noble Pokemon as a level cap is they can all easily be defeated without Pokemon. So you 
using their level as the cap would make things too easy, which is why I'm using the last main fight before the frenzied fight of each area. SpongeBob continues being the star of the show during our second battle with Ray. I start with a calm mind, but then the Mr. Mime pulls off an agile hypnosis, then Zen headbutts. SpongeBob is too drowsy to move, so the Mime puts up an iron defense. Next time, we're able to bubble, and they Zen headbutt again. For the last attack against the baby Mime, I have SpongeBob use an agile bubble, so that way Pikachu can't pull off two electric moves when it arrives. The drowsiness wears off alongside with our calm mind boost. Pikachu quick attacks, then thunder shocks. I really want SpongeBob alive, so I risk Sandy Cheeks, who gets paralyzed right away. After a scary moment of being fully paralyzed and thunder shocked, Sandy one shots the Pikachu with a bulldoze, making that our closest battle yet. Will you get out of my face, you creepy old man? I just wanted to buy some supplies. Then our journey takes us to the Crimson Mirelands, where I add a Psyduck to my team at the Golden Lowlands, named Patrick Star. Is mayonnaise an instrument? After admiring Calibus Barrel, Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. The shameless stalker Volo walks right up to us, asking us for a friendly battle. SpongeBob easily takes care of the Togepi, but the Gibble bulldozes us right away. Not just once, but twice. SpongeBob can't handle another one of those. However, Sandy is fast enough to move after switching in, joining the craze of bulldozing each other until the battle is won. Craving for attention, Mrs. Puff evolves into a float soul. Then the least likable characters show up to cause mayhem. I swear. Charm looks like a homeless person, and the other two are probably just these try-hard YouTubers. Thankfully, I only have to face Coin for now, who gets a lucky critical hit at the start of the battle. Bubble Bass brushes his shoulders off, then performs a sick Aqua Jet Aerial Ace combo. Get out of here! lady. At first, I thought I was just lucky when Ursaluna missed the play rough. SpongeBob bubbles, then weakens the bear with baby doll eyes. And there it goes again, missing! <laughs> The reason for this was the fog. Turns out the weather lowers everyone's accuracy, and PlayRough already has a chance of missing in the first place. I was even planning on losing a Pokemon in this battle, but this is way better. How'd you find me all the way out here? Uh, Ursa Luna picked up on a scent. He wasn't the only one! No wonder the Lilligant was frenzied. Before heading to the Cobalt Coastlands, Gary evolves into Gastrodon, and Patrick becomes a Golduck. Love the song, Irida, but SpongeBob will never let his guard down against your Glaceon. Yo, Polina, are you in the wrong universe? If you ever want to wear your goggles without actually ever wearing them, you should try the Digibon universe. Then at Ginkgo Landing, go eat your demise. Rolling, rolling, rolling. I'll name you Pearl. T -t Open sesame! Well, I've done all I can do. Once Basque Legion is summoned, I can go look for more team members. Back at Lake Verity, I catch a Magikarp named Alaskan Bullworm. Then at Lake Valor, I catch an overleveled Whiskash who is boxed. At Castaway Shore, I use my sneaky ninja smoke bombs to catch a Remoraid named Mr. Krabs. At Tranquility Cove, I try to get a Mantine. I don't think it likes to smell that stuff. Oh no, don't disappear, don't disappear. <gasps> We lost Mantine. I am able to get Finneon at Seagrass Haven, naming him Mermaid Man. Then this happens at Spring Path. Oh, Pip up. Oh, don't run away. Don't run away. I got you. Okay. No! No! We lost Pip up! <laughs> But at least I'm successful in catching a tentacool named Squidward. Then the series of evolutions begins. Alaskan Bullworm is now a Gyarados. Mr. Krabs becomes a totally different animal octillery. Pearl doubles in size as a Celio. Squidward is more tentacrueler than ever. And Mermaid Man retires as a Luminion. The team is now ready to rescue the kidnapped Growlithe from the homeless Misfortune Sisters. Seriously, what's wrong with these people? Scaring a puppy with a terrifying ghost? The tricky thing about these fights is that they are back to back and you can't can't change the order of your Pokemon, so strategy is key here. Thankfully, Squidward only needs to dump one sludge bomb on the Obama Snow, but then Coin's Toxicroak is not as nice. After a water pulse, the Dart Frog goes into Agile style with Mud Bomb, then hits us a second time with the same move. I call back Squidward to his Pokeball and pray Gary can hit Toxicroak, even though the Mud Bomb raises its evasiveness. Just need to get one Earth Power up, buddy. You're fine. You're fine. You got this, baby. You got this. You missed. Just need you to hit one, dude. 
Gastro hit him! No, Gastro! Okay, okay. Ugh, that went a lot better in my head. SpongeBob is fast enough to switch in safely, but barely misses the KO with Water Pulse. After being socked by a poison jab, SpongeBob waters down the frog once more. Last fight is with Charm. Thankfully, Rhydon is a slow piece of crap, so I can safe switch in SpongeBob once again to move first with Water Pulse, drenching Rhydon, then tanking the Shadow Ball from Gengar very well, and finish off their last Pokemon with a Shadow Ball. With the Fortune Sisters out of my way, I can calm down the recently evolved Arcanine and evolve bubble bass into a hisuian samurai all right andrew all right andrew you can do this melly he is a guy finally got that right after being wrong for two videos hey ho boss man kamado okay you just lost my respect adamant's leafeon is our next battle and even though the grass type may seem scary to a mono water team squidward is not only part poison but is also a pretty fast pokemon taking out the leafeon before he can even blink even after that display of strength melly continues not listening to his leader's orders by blocking my way into parts of coordinate highlands. Thanks to the defensive boost from Gary's relaxed nature, he can comfortably take in the Night Slash before decimating the Skuntake with ground attacks. Ingle wants to battle as well, and I really gotta be careful here since this is one of the harder matches. I first have Squidward Acid Armor while the Machoke goes for a double edge. Then a shiny Dazzling Gleam makes the Muscle Man go bye-bye. But we all know Ingo's Glysaur is the one to be afraid of. <gasps> my ball misses! Tentacruel's gonna live! Oh, it lived. My ball misses again. What? Oh my gosh. Guys, I mean, this run is just so easy if I keep getting this lucky. I don't want a Sneasler. I want my last encounter, Basculin. And it's a female too, which is a special attacker as opposed to the male version, which is a physical attacker. Shortly after that, Pearl evolves into a Walrein. The final fight for this area is once again Melly. Just like last time, I'm hit with a Night Slash. So I go for a Bulldoze to go twice like I did in the previous battle. I mean, we could get put to sleep, I guess. Jeez. <gasps> wait, wait, wait. I thought we were gonna go twice. Nice. How fast is Wall Rain? 65 speed? What the crap? Whatever. I, I probably should actually Ice Beam would have been better, but it's fine. Yeah. Hypnosis misses. Wow, this is literally the luckiest run. Why doesn't this crap happen during the ghost run? I feel like Hypnosis always hit in the ghost run, but not in this one. The action speed in this game just doesn't make sense to me at times. Oh well, at least Electrode is now less angry. Then I go back to the Obsidian Fieldlands to safely rack up some recoil damage so that way Plankton can evolve into a Basculegion. And I think she's a great encounter for Ray's Pokemon, especially the Mr. Mime who drops dead immediately from the Shadow Ball. But then... There's the Pikachu with the Agile Strong combo. Here it is. This is gonna be a close one. Oh, it's gonna be close! That's our first death. Holy crap. Well, that was sad to see. I was hoping its base HP stat of 120 would be enough, but it wasn't. As you can see from the rest of the battle, Gastrodon would have been the perfect switch to save his fish friend. I then get access to the final area, Alabaster Iceland, and I'm pretty sure Garrick is the ancestor of Hans and Franz. So we are here to pop. You are. SpongeBob's dark and water typing is the perfect counter since he resists all of their ice, dark, and ghost attacks. So this battle was an easy GG. Now you're probably thinking the three versus one battle against Sabi's team is gonna be hard. Well, with water types, it's not. Rhyperior is four times weak to water along with horrendous special defense. And Gastrodon is immune to all of Electrovire's attacks. Talk about being a cakewalk when this fight was such a tough one during a first time playthrough. Raviari then flexes its wings, but is no match for my walrus. It's all about you girl on your 16th ice beam Urgh, i can't believe bravey already lost i'll head home now bye whoa sabi that's not cool to joke about suicide like that and i thought i hated sabi hey look the rock um you weren't supposed to see that so uh you're banished how could you be so heartless mm, what to do what to do <laughs> The 
the Alpha Hisuian Zoroark inside gets greedy with a nasty plot. I punish simply by using an Agile Aqua Jet followed by a strong Night Slash. The next cave holds an Alpha Overquill, which dives into action right away with a double edge. I command Gary to do Agile Earth Power, and it looks like the strong style would not have got the kill. This means Overquill can't do two moves in a row, giving us another win. Hello, Moto. I saved the hardest alpha for last, Hisuian Gudra. I gotta be really careful here because after that Dragon Pulse, Gary can die to a two-hit combo. So I use Agile Style whenever I can, like I did with the Recover, then with the Earth Power, but the Gudra was still able to pull off a Shelter and Hydro Pump before my next turn. I continue to heal with Agile Recover while they blow Hydro Pump at us. Then I see an opening, Bulldoze. It lowers the Gudra speed just enough to give me another turn, winning this battle deathless. The Pokemon at the lakes grant me the gift of the red chain for proving my worth. Now let's go save the world. In my opinion, Benny has the toughest team to fight throughout the main story. They're all fast and hit hard, but what they do lack is bulk. So right after Sandy dodges the hypnosis, she crunches the Miss Magius to zero HP. That victory is short-lived though, since the ugly sneezer comes in for revenge with close combat. Gastrodon returns the favor with his own earth power, crumbling that mistake of a Pokemon. Now Benny's Gardevoir means business, boosting their attack and defenses upon entering the field. If I switch in anyone, they're going to take a hard hit, even possibly die. Since I did have another ground slash water type in the box, I make the tough decision of keeping Gary in. He fought his heart out, mixing recoveries with attacks, and almost got the kill too if it wasn't for that max potion. But eventually he falls, so the rest of the team can live. SpongeBob, ferocious after losing his pet snail, sets up a calm mind which neuters the damage of the incoming psychic. He's got things handled from here, shadow blowing the guard of war to the shadow room. Realm. Glade, with fear-filled eyes, jabs a drain punch, but knows his demise is upon him as SpongeBob pulls off an agile quick attack shadow ball combo, besting Benny the Ninja. Now I know the game tries to frame Commander Kamado as the first big baddie, but honestly his team has a bunch of slow pokes, and you need speed to have a broken team in this game. His Braviary is his only fast mon, but once its turn is over, a calm mind boosted shadow ball makes quick work of the bird. His next Pokemon Snorlax is likely his toughest. Here's how every turn goes down. Snorlax uses Zen Headbutt, then I have Spongebob Agile Quick Attack with a Water Pulse right after. I'll call mine instead of Quick Attack if the increased stats disappear, and Kamado will use a Max Potion when his big boy needs HP. Just when I think I can live another Zen Headbutt, Kamado pulls this number on me. Oh, Giga Impact! Oh, I did not expect the Giga Impact. Spongebob's dead. Shoot. I, I kept using Zen Headbutt, so I thought I was safe. After that Giga Impact, Bubble Bass is able to pull off three attacks, an Aqua Jet, a Night Slash, and another Aqua Jet, which of course beats the Snorlax. Now, I don't understand why Kamado sends in Golem next when he has the freaking Fairy-type Clefable in his party. Thus, I take this free opportunity to bring in Squidward, who puts up an Acid Armor, then drowns the Golem with a Water Pulse. The Clefable I feared finally joins the fray, starting off with a Calm Mind. We then Sludge Bomb and Psychic each other. The last turn falls into my hand, meaning Squidward seals the deal with the Team Galaxy leader. However, Kamado is not the final boss of the main story Nuzlocke. Is it Dialga, the god of time? Nope. I tested it, and even if you defeat this guy instead of catching it, the game won't let you progress any further until you capture it. Ultra Ball works on the first try. But no, the real final boss of the main story are these people. Specifically Charm. What a letdown. Well, so was my starter at the beginning, and now he's a samurai sea line. Let's end things how they began. Bubble Bass soaks the ride on with Water Pulse. Do things really end that easily, though? Oh, he's doing a combo. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Charm putting up a fight. But, yeah, we resist. <laughs> Just get up. Come on. You just need one move. Bubble Bass! You have to end this! Finally! Okay, we end it. And that's the Nuzlocke, everyone. 
we win. I technically end things by catching the last water type, which is an abomination. However, no Pokemon can be used during that sequence. The world is saved, and that's how I beat a Legends Arceus Nuzlocke using only water types. Go check out my recent playing as Volo Challenge, like and subscribe, you know, all that good stuff that helps me out. You all have a good one. Thanks.